the most popular questions I see when unbelievers are talking about God is, where was God when such and such event happened? Where was God when my mama died? Where was God when this person got shot? Where was God when I had cancer? Where was God when uh, black folks went slavery? That's good. We hear that a lot amongst uh, black folks. It's crazy because the people that the Bible describes as God's chosen people, including Yeshua the Christ himself, have dark skin, yet they also have stubborn, unbelieving ways. Go figure. people called the Israelites in the Bible in Deuteronomy chapter 28 well they turn their backs on God God gives them provision we want judges we want a king we don't want the manna from heaven we don't want this person who calls himself Yeshua the Christ telling us that he's God in the flesh we don't want that crucify Yeshua Give us Barabbas. Give us the thief. Who is this man trying to tell us what to do? See, man's biggest problem is he wants to be his own God. Okay? But you can't solve the sin problem. As a matter of fact, some of us want the excuse to sin and do what we want to do with no penalty. But it don't work like that because your name ain't God. You might want to be God, but you ain't him. You can't save yourself from death. How are you going to save somebody else? So where is God during these things happening? Hold on, wait a minute. Where was God when you stole? Where was God when you lied? Where was God when you cheated? The wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. So wait a minute. Where is God right now? For you, for me. For anybody who's sinned and fallen short of his glory. You mean to tell me that I'm still here? I'm still living after committing my sins in which the punishment is death? Well, that's a blessing now, ain't it? Because see, if God comes for vengeance right now for sin, he's got to come for you. But... When it's time for judgment, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, I did this and I did that. Yeah, but you also sinned. So you better stop asking where God is before he shows up and exercises vengeance on you and requires a sacrifice called you. He tells you your time is up. See, that's the beautiful thing about the God of the Bible. You get time to repent. And I, get, I know I get a lot of flack from people who know me in my personal life because I'm too serious and I'm talking about fire and brimstone. But that's what it is. When Yahweh decides it's over, it's over. And ain't no coming back. Ain't no crossing back over. What happens with a lot of unbelievers and God bless them, you are still supposed to share the uh, the word with them, share the great commission with them to repent die to their sins put their sins on Yeshua the Christ and accept that part but you have some people who legit, they don't want to hear that anyway, they've got their mind made up and like it says in 1st Titus you share with them once, share with them twice, but if they continue to be a heretic or basically one who speaks against the word, you got to let them be. But for the person who's saying, well, where was God when this happened? Well, number one, you wasn't following God. You weren't being righteous and following his commandments. And if you were, if you had faith, you'd understand. We live in a fallen world because he describes himself in his word. He describes what we need to go through and where we have to go. Because if the people that are called by his name will humble themselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways he'll come back and heal the land but we want to be our own God and I know I'm not necessarily 
uh, flipping through the Bible and giving you scripture uh, references with the numbers, but you can Google search what I'm saying. You can search through the Bible to see if what I'm saying is incorrect. You're supposed to, as a matter of fact. There was a uh, group of people in the Bible called the Bereans. They, whenever somebody would come talking about what is being said on behalf of God, they would search every particular word in scripture. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to make sure I leave you with the scripture. Since we're talking about where is God. Let me go ahead and quote you. Okay. What is this gift of where is it found? It's in the book of Romans. Romans 6 and 23. I was about to say Romans 3 and 23. But Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'll give you one more. My apologies for the pause. This kind of just hit me out of nowhere, so I had to. I had to say this while it was on my mind because I just heard this today on somebody else's YouTube channel you know, they were calling people who are believers fools and saying well where was a guy when this church that just got robbed of $400,000 by this jewelry wearing pastor or something like that um, so they're like well where was God when this church got robbed well first of all did God even send this person To uh, preach his word. Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. So the wages of sin is death and we all fall short. And I'm going to repeat those again. Romans 6, 23 and Romans 3 and 23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He has a standard we can't keep. So if you're begging for God to come down and wipe out all sin on the earth right now and he shouldn't have let them things happen well he shouldn't let you live either so before you start trying to call God out of what God ain't do and you're a mere mortal who can't fix the sin problem itself check yourself before you wreck yourself and time is running short look at the things that are happening in the world wildfires plagues, pestilence the book of revelation is coming to life so while you can, repent of your sins, ask for forgiveness, believe on the one who died for your sins, because if you don't believe on the one who died for your sins, that means you have to die for them.